Men and women of valor, I welcome you all to this network. My name is Yemi Oluwumi, and this is Burning Glory International Network. Burning Glory International Network is an interdenominational ministry dedicated to mobilizing God's end time army for the end time revival. Burning Glory International Network is called to alarm the body of Christ as touching the upcoming agenda in God's timetable for the planet that is the end time revival. And then, to in response to this alarm, gather, prepare, equip and ready the body of Christ as they metamorphose into his end time army so that they can then rise up and go forth into battle as they bring forth and birth the end time revival in the nations of the earth. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless you once again. I glorify you. Lord, we bless you. We bless you. We thank you for the opportunity in your presence. Tonight, I ask that, Lord, uh, you make yourself manifest, even uh, amidst your people. Tonight, visit us with another dimension of your grace. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. I welcome us all again to another great time in the presence of God. I will trust that God is going to encounter us even mightily in His presence again today in Jesus' name. Please, um, if you have not liked this video, I would like that even as we begin, please like this video. Um, if you are not subscribed before you are a new subscriber, please subscribe to this video. I trust that you are going to get content that has value content that has value god is going to touch your life even today in the mighty name of jesus i want us to go right on into today's uh topic preparing your ministry oil preparing your ministry oil preparing your ministry oil as we approach uh the this great end time revival that uh god is about to visit planet earth with uh one of those things that god will be wanting us to look into is uh preparing our ministry oil you see um in the revival that uh god is about to uh visit us with you know i had an encounter with god and uh, one of the things i saw in, the, in that encounter about this revival that is coming i began to see god place uh all of us all the saints all his children in uh, different uh, spheres of society i began to see uh, god put some of us in the area of uh uh, business in the area of economy i saw god putting some of us in the entertainment industry i began to see god placing us in different areas in fact uh, there is a teaching on seven mountains uh, that is out in the body of christ and surprisingly i believe that teaching came from god because uh in, in that my encounter god took me to the future and i'm not just talking about me seeing a vision now i'm talking about me encountering the future and, you know I'm, I'm talking about god taking me into uh, uh 33 years into the year 20, 2056 and i began to see the state of planet earth and some of the things i began to see was i saw saints positioned in different spheres of the society i saw the power of god move massively upon planet earth and we were positions we were set in place and one more thing that god gave each and every one of us is influence god began to i saw that each one of us had influence each of the saints had influence in whatever industry that god put us in i began to see um the the the, the power of god um so strong and so powerful i began to see the power of god so uh, uh great in the lives of many i began to see that uh each of us 
you know even though uh we are a body even though we are an army of god even though each of us you know we are different and we are separate we are all running on, on our own marks we are all running in our own uh ranks all of us have our own places but each of us had what we call influence influence and god began to show me that influence is going to be the key that we will be using uh, in this coming revival influence will turn the world over to jesus influence will bring the world back to jesus influence will cause uh, the world to surrender to jesus god is going to give us a dimension of influence you know a dimension of influence that would cause men and women and um, unbelievers and unbelievers people who have gone astray from god to come back to jesus in this revival that god god showed me uh, one of the things one of the key weapons that god is saying god is showing that is going to be uh, 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 the key factor in this revival is the power of influence and influence you know i began to see like i told us uh, uh some time ago i began to see god using this influence to bring souls into the kingdom i began to see that you know as at that time god took me uh into that encounter we were about just 40 percent into the revival and this revival even at 40 percent had dominated planet earth i began to see governments uh, i began to see religions i began to see a lot of uh, uh, uh a lot of uh, gathering together even against this move of god that was taking over the planet earth i began to see how the devil wanted to begin to oppose and uh, antagonize everything that belonged to god everything that was of god I see an angel in my spirit and is an angel of harvest. And the Lord is saying, let me just give you what I'm hearing. The Lord is saying, that I'm here tonight. I'm here tonight. For I am here tonight to bring about a preparation of my people for the coming harvest. A harvest is about to sweep the earth. A harvest is about to sweep the earth. But my people are not yet ready. My people are not yet ready. I don't know. I see this angel, the mighty tall uh, angel, uh, mighty tall old angel, very tall angel, and he's saying that I, the Lord, have called uh, you, my people, to be the men and women who will bring this revival to planet Earth. My people who will bring revival to planet Earth. The question I have in me for you is: Are you ready for this revival tonight? I'm preparing you as touching the power the capacity to bring this revival the question is are you capable are, are you capable have you come to a place where you can carry enough capacity to bring revival to bring a move of god uh the lord says i'm ready i'm ready i'm ready i'm ready i see still see the angel of harvest and he's saying he's ready the angel is ready but if the, the only person that god is waiting for now are his people god is waiting for his people the time is is very near the time is very near the time is very near for i'm not waiting i'm not waiting because my plan must come to pass my plan must come to pass and my people must rise my people must rise see the lord of hosts my people must rise thank you lord jesus for that word thank you jesus so one of those things let me go back to the message one of those things that i began to see was that the people of god were ready and they were prepared they were prepared you know uh they, each of them god gave them influence and influence was the power that, that god gave them they were able to use that influence and they were joy souls were coming in souls were coming in i began to see governments began to react i began to see the, the power of god was so strong that uh, there began to be oppositions from the camp of the enemy using institutions like uh, politics like the government institutions like uh, 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 um, the, the, the business realm in institutions like even the religious realm and they began to antagonize this move of god as the power of god began to ravage the earth began to sweep over the earth but how how did we christians how did we the army of god get to this particular place god gave us a particular tool and that tool is called influence 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 and exactly how does this influence work how did god give us the power of influence we had the ability to influence nations for him we had the ability to influence people in the businessman to a mandate uh 
in the, in the in the business uh, realm or let me say in the business boat or in the business sphere, they carried such an ability of God, such that because of the power they wield they, that they wielded in the business realm, they were able to uh, tap into the economic reserve, the, the economic uh, 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 reserve to be able to draw souls to God. They were able to bring men to God. The power of God was so strong upon their life that they had they made uh, economic decisions that made them uh, 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 captains of industries, captains that were able to also not just change the life of people for the better, but also draw them to God. I began to see men and women uh, in different areas, people in the area of government, people in the area of religion, God began to give them power, capacity, and the, that power and the capacity, they had the ability to draw men into God. They had the ability to, to draw souls into God. None of them remained the way they were. None of them remained the way they were. None of them remained the way they were turned into another man. They were turned into warriors. They were turned into capable men and women. They were men that had the ability to bring nations to, 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 to their feet in the presence of God. They were men and women who had the ability to cause uh, 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 world, world regions to bow to the name of God. They were men who carried revival in their wings. They were men who God gave capacity to draw a whole nation back to God. And all they do is they did this by the power of influence. They carried influence and by the power of God in their life, by what God did in their life, they were able to influence nations for God. They were able to influence nations for God. So God gave them a weapon. God has given each and every of his army, each and every of his soldier in the army of God, God is giving us a weapon. Each of us will have a weapon. Each of us will carry a capacity, a capacity, a, a weapon of influence such that we are able to be able to draw souls to men, to God. We are able to draw men to God. I see that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved because what? We will carry that capacity. We will carry that influence. I want to show us a particular scripture. In Balia Catalogue, O Sante Le Cata Dalaba, Isaiah chapter Oje Ebra Sacato Shake Chapter sixteen. I want us to look at what God says. Look at it. He said, Arise, talking about uh, the revival at that time. He said, Arise, shine. He said, For thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. So, God is saying it is time for us to arise. It is our own generation, I've said it, that is called to arise. Because when God took me into 2056, you describe like this, this is our present generation that is called to this revival. It is not a generation of our fathers that is coming. It is not the generation below that is coming. It, we are the generation that God is looking towards. We are the generation that God is calling for this revival. It is our generation that I saw that God began to use to to bring that revival. This is not a maybe. This is what God has ordained. This is what God is preparing the earth for. This is what God is preparing the church for. So my brother, my sister, God is jeering your heart and God is calling you right now. If you are under the sound of my voice, are you preparing for this revival? Are you preparing for what God is about to do on planet earth? God has an agenda. God has a prophetic agenda. God has something he's about to do on planet earth and you must not be put by the side. You must not be by the side. You must not be a, a, a left out in the plan and the agenda of God. As long as you belong to God, as long as you belong, you are part of his people. God has a, a mandate for you. God has an assignment for you. God has something for you. And he's saying here, yeah, he said, arise. He's calling you for arise. He's saying shine. Why? Because your light has come. What light? He said the glory of the Lord is risen. There is a glory that is supposed to shine from you. There is an influence that is supposed to manifest from you. That influence, God is has the ability, is going to come forth in the, in the form of light, in the form of glory. He said the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Look at verse 3. He said, and Gentiles shall what? Come to thy light. We want souls to come to us. We want souls to come to us. But we think that in the secret is uh, having uh, having a ministry or it, the ministry the, the secret is of knowing the word. The secret is doing one thing or the other. But God is saying something. He said, Gentiles shall come to thy light. You are not the one that is going to be looking for them. But there is something good that is going to be about you. There is a light that you will possess. There is a light that you will possess. That there is an influence that you will carry upon your life. It will be like light. It will shine bright. And then before you know it, men and women will be running towards you. Men and women will be running towards say Gentiles shall come. You are not the one that will go forth to be looking for them. You are not the one that will rise up to begin to search for them. But Gentiles will come to thy light. Look at it. He said, and kings, to the brightness 
of your rising. So when you rise, the glory of God will be so strong upon you and you will shine bright. And because of this shining, the Bible says even kings, captains of industry, presidents, uh, 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 leaders, you know, they will come to you. So it's not just going to be ordinary men. It will be even kings who come to the brightness of your rising. So there is something that's supposed to be bright about your rising. There is something that is supposed to be key to, to be great about your rising. You are not meant to be ordinary. You are not meant to be ordinary. Like God was saying in that prophecy from before, that he's saying that he's ready to raise men and women. He's ready to raise men and women who have the capacity, who have the capacity to fulfill this assignment. You, the light that you that God wants to give unto you. Are you going to rise up to, to shine bright? Is the light of God in your, in your heart, the light of God that will shine from your life, is it going to be so strong, so capable? Is it, is it going to be so bright that what? That kings will will rise, uh, kings will come to the brightness of your rising. Is it going to be that strong? When we talk about glory, the Bible is talking about uh, the power of God. The Bible is talking about the anointing of the Spirit. The Bible is talking about the oil of your ministry. The Bible is talking about the, 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 the glory it wants to release. There is the oil that God wants to release upon your life that will, that will skyrocket your life even from the realm of the ordinary. When the power of God came upon Samuel, where, upon Saul, the Bible told us, it said that Saul was turned into another man. When the power, the anointing of the Spirit came upon Saul, he became another man instantly. He became another man instantly. The Bible says that he was turned into another man. And God is saying, I want to turn you into another man. Hey, I'm Barata He says, I want to turn you into another man. You are not called to be ordinary. I'm hearing from the Spirit. You are not called to be ordinary. I've ordained you to be super extraordinary. I've ordained you to be super extraordinary. You are meant to carry nations in your bosom. You are meant to carry them mentions in your bosom. You are not meant to be ordinary. You are meant to be super extraordinary. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And God is saying that is what he has called you to be. You are supposed to be turned into another man. You are supposed to be turned into another man. You are not meant to just be ordinary. Now, there is a scripture I would like to show us. Uh, I mean, like, come to that scripture, I would like to show us. For now, let me just continue until I get into that scripture. So let me go back to the scripture. He said, and Gentiles shall come to thy light. And I've told us that this light is the glory of God. Is the anointing of the Spirit. Light can represent many things in scriptures. But in this particular place, God is talking about the light that will draw nations to you. The light that will draw men to you. The light that will draw people to you. The light that will draw kings to you. The light that will draw nations unto you. He says, Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness. There is a dimension of glory that must that must that must that must be demonstrated from your life for you to be extraordinary. There was a dimension of the anointing. There is something God has called you to. There is a dimension of glory that God wants to release upon your life. Let me quickly take us to that scripture. Let's go to John chapter 2. John chapter 2. Look at I want to use the life of Jesus as a case sample. You know, when you talk about light and glory, you know, people to think that we are people can uh, 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 it can light can talk about so many things. It can talk about the word of God, it can talk, but in this place, it's talking about the anointing of the spirit, it's talking about the, the oil of your ministry, it's talking about the oil that God has called you to, the oil that God wants to release in your life. Look at verse 11. A push John 2 chapter uh, verse 11 also procotable blah, blah, blah. now these are the wedding of Cana and when Jesus turned water into wine this is what the Bible said about him he said this beginning of miracles the Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested what and manifested forth is what is glory there was a glory that came forth from Jesus Bible said he manifested forth what is glory 
You see that? Let me read it again. The beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee. Do you see that? And manifested forth his what? His glory. And what happened? And his disciples believed on him. So until you manifest forth the glory of God in your life, the disciples will not believe on you. The nations will not hear you. Nobody will want to see the life of God in you. Nobody will want to hear what you have to say. You will not be able to bring nations to bow. This is the singular reason why Jesus was able to bring the world to bow before him. This is the singular reason because of what? Because of the glory of God that manifested forth from his life. The anointing of God was so manifest upon his life. A paria kalabadala and so God said he said, he said, he said, Gentiles will come to your light. You know, when you hear light here, you used to think that you are talking about the word of God. No, we are talking about the anointing of God upon you, the glory of God upon you, the, 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 the power, the oil of your ministry, the oil that God has given to you to become extraordinary, the oil that God has put in your life to become to become super extraordinary. He's talking, the Bible says that Jesus said manifested forth what is glory. He manifested forth his glory. He said about Saul, uh, Saul. He said you will be turned into another man. He said the spirit of the Lord will come upon you, and you will be turned into another man. God is wanting you to be turned into another man. He wants you to manifest forth your glory. The first question is this: Have you even found your own dimension of glory? Because you see, we are all called to different dimensions of glory. Just as I saw in that in that encounter, I began to see that God placed us in different places. We were placed strategically. I'm even still seeing us again. We are placed strategically in different areas for in that revival. Some of us were placed in the economic mountain, in the entertainment mountain. Some of us were placed in the celebration mountain. Some of us were placed in the family mountain. We were placed in different places, and God gave us the power of influence and influence in the place of glory influence in the, in the area of glory the, the influence God gave us was so much it was influence in the form of glory in the form of capacity, in the form of oil, the ministry oil the, in, in the form of us having capacity to draw men what I began to, to see was that our life had carried the capacity and through whatever area God has called us to, we are able to draw men to God, we are able to draw men we are able to draw men, one time I had an encounter with God and he pointed me to that scripture we read before, Isaiah chapter 60 verse 3. And he began to tell me that the secret of this revival, the secret of this revival that is about to happen, that this revival that we are, we are, we are coming to, it is not going to be, it is not going to be, Kappa and we that we are going to be looking for sinners. No, it's not going to be we that we are going to be looking for men. We will come to a place where the power of God will be so strong upon our lives that kings will come to the brightness of the horizon. God wants to mantle us, us, ye break it over. God wants to give an anointing to us. Makale break it over. God wants to release the power. God wants to release the dimension of His presence upon us. Because why? The kings are supposed to come to the brightness of your rising. Please, I need you to, to, to lay a hand upon your heart and say, Kings will come to the brightness of my rising. Kings will come to the brightness of my rising. Kings will come to the brightness of my rising. Gentiles shall come to my light. And kings will come to the brightness of my rising. And God showed me that this is going to be the secret of this revival. And so this is where the message comes today. Preparing your ministry oil. So have you prepared your own oil? The question is, first question is, have you even discovered your own oil? Have you even discovered your own area? Because all of us will not be the same. All of us will be different. The oil that all of us will carry will be so different. Let me show us the scripture. Let's go to the book of Joel. Joel, Joel, Joel. Palia patada laba to shekete. Aria kapalo soto. Joel chapter 2. Ebra soko de baba baba. Rapa de bo shekete baba baba baba. I want us to look at from verse 7. He said, talking about the army of God. This is a portrait of the army of God. When you read from verse 1 to verse 11, he says, but I want to especially look at one thing, one particular feature about this army that God is raising. Because the, the, some people call it the Joel's army, but this is an army that God is raising. And this army will be up and running by 2056. It will be before 2056 because the revival will begin long before then. And then God will be, God is already apportioning destinies. As you are listening to me, God is wanting to mantle you. I can feel the presence of God. And I see that he wants to mantle some of us. Even by the end of today's uh, 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 meeting, he's going to mantle some of us. He's going to be apportioning us 
Jesus places in that revival, portions in that revival. And there is something he's saying in verse 7. He said they shall run. I want us to personalize, personalize it because it is all that God is bringing to that revival. He said we shall run like mighty men. We shall run like mighty men. We shall run like mighty men. He said we shall climb the wall like men of war. He said and they shall march. Okay, and we shall march everyone on our way. Do you see that? Everyone on our way, you see that, and we shall not break ranks. We shall not break ranks. So that means that all of us will be different. So we can all carry a dimension of God. We can all carry glory. Kings will come to the uh, brightness of our rising. But all of us have our own rank. All of us have our own path. All of us are different. Look at, look at, look at the next verse. Neither shall one trust another. They shall walk everyone on his own part so everybody will be different because in an army truly everybody is going to be called to different some of us will be called to business to education but in, in a natural army some people will be full soldiers some people will, will, will be generals some people will be snipers some people will, there will be different places in the army and so the grace that all of us will have will be different not all of us will be different not all, not all of us will be the same quickly let's look at into uh, one particular scripture there are many scriptures the one that is common to many of us uh let me quickly look at uh, first, let me just go to first Corinthians chapter uh, 14. Abaro Shekete Baba First Corinthians chapter 14. Obaro Shekete Ba Ebrapo Shekete Baba. First Corinthians chapter 14. Baba Shekada. Okay, is it? Barato Shekete Bra Asokoria Baba. Okay, okay. It's for it's still chapter 12. Let's go to chapter 12. I want us to look at it from verse 28. It says, And God has set some in the church. He said, Apostles prophets teachers miracles gift of healings helps government diversities of tongues do you see that diversities of tongues you see that diverse even here you also mentioned interpretation of tongues so god has called people to different things helps government people who are gifted in administration people who are also gifted in helping people there are also people that are gifted in teaching there are people that are gifted in the gift of miracles people with different kind of gifts so we, would not, we do not all have the same grace. We are all different. We are all having the same, uh, different offices, different assignments. So we all have different graces. Look at Romans, Romans chapter twelve. Baratus Okoria Baba. Look at uh, from verse. Let's look at uh, four. He said, for as you have many members in one body, talked about the body of Christ, and all members have not the same office. He said, so we being many are one body in Christ and have uh, and everyone members one of another everyone members one of another you see that so he said let me read verse 4 again for we have, we have many members in one body all members have not what the same office I know many of us have heard of uh, the office of the apostle the office of the prophet the office of the evangelist but look at what the bible is saying here you think that there are only fivefold offices he said for as we have many members in one body so Talking about every member in the body of Christ, he said, and all members have not the same office. Do you know that you have an office? Do you know that you have an office? Do you know that there is an office that God has called you to? You may not be called apostle, but there is something, there is an office that God is calling you to. There is an office that God is appointing you to. There is a grace that God wants to impact upon your life. There is an anointing. There is, there, is, there, is, there, is, there is something that God is releasing upon your life. There is an oil that God wants to release upon you. Look at what it says. Kabalige esheke asoto Verse 6, it says, Having then gifts differing according to the grace. Do you see that? According to the grace that is given to us. You know? Grace. Another name for ministry oil, we can call it grace. Because, like I said, what God showed me in that encounter, when I was in the future, one of the things I saw was that each of us had what we call influence. And that influence was so strong that it drew men. We were not the ones struggling. The Bible said kings will come to the brightness of your rising. So they will come to us because of what the influence that we carry. Because of the glory, the brightness of that glory that God has given unto us. And you, I need to understand that, that it, was, it, it took away effort from our side. 
It was the glory that was drawing men. It was not our own human effort. It was the glory. It was the grace that was drawing men. And so another word for 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 oil can be grace. Another uh, word for 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 influence can be grace. And so there is a grace that God is putting upon my life that would assist me. I will not be struggling in this revival. I will not be struggling to draw men to God. I will not be struggling to draw people to God, to draw sinners to repentance. If the grace of God upon my life is what is going to do. Look at what it says. Abala Versus having them gifts differing according to grace that is given unto us. Do you see that? Whether prophecy, so some people be called to prophecy. Is it according to the proportion of faith? Is it or ministry, which is another word, which is service or help? We've already seen that in First Corinthians chapter 12. He said, or teaching. You see that? Teaching. Some people are gifted in teaching. You see that? Or he that exhorted. The way I'm exhorting right now. Or he that exhorted. Some people are gifted in that ability. They have an ability to exhort me. He said, or he that rulet. Another word for government. That's the song in First Corinthians chapter 12. Or he that showed mercy. Do you see that? Mercy. So here you will see different kind of gifts. And so I need you to understand that the gifts of, of the spirit that you see in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, they are not everything that there exists. There are people with different kind of gifts that are going to be coming up. As you've seen different more gifts that, than, than you've even seen in the book of uh, Romans chapter 12. Why is God saying this? Because God needs us to understand that we carry the oil. You carry a oil. There is a ministry oil that God has implanted upon your life. There is something dynamic about you. There is a ministry oil. And that ministry oil, you cannot encounter it until you walk with God to a point of encountering that oil. You see, the first question I want to ask tonight is this. What is your oil? Have you discovered your ministry oil? Have you discovered what God is calling you to do? Have you discovered why you are special? Have you discovered who you are? Have you discovered? Have you discovered uh, exactly what you are? Have you discovered why you are different? Have you discovered uh, your own capacity, your own oil, your own grace, your own anointing? Have you discovered who you are in Jesus? Have you discovered what He has called you to? Have you discovered the secret of your life? Have you discovered the mystery of why you are different? You see, some of us, from the time we were born. Maybe at age three, at four, there are people that God called them to be maybe to be uh, prophets, evangelists, and it would reflect from from the time they were born. You know, they can. Some people have had encounters at the age of three, at the age of seven, and God has told them, "This is what I'm calling you to be." And they know that there is a calling of God upon their lives, and then they begin to walk towards it. And so, some of them will begin to prophesy from that age. Some of them will begin to win souls from that age, and then they will know that this is the oil upon their lives. That is good for them. But a majority of us. You no, know, we will not necessarily discover our, our anointing immediately. We will not necessarily discover our oil immediately. Or immediately, we will have to work with God. So some people will immediately discover the oil of God upon their life, and the power of God is even possible may begin to work with them powerfully from the beginning. I know one or two persons that right from the when they were born, they could hear the voice of God. And if you ask them, you know, how to teach you how to, to, to hear the voice of God, they may not be able to because they were born with that ability. If some people were born with the ability to see. They could see in the spirit, they could hear in the spirit and so some people were born with their grace even there, some people were born with the ability to teach, and those people who are born with an ability to sing, they will sing and the power of God will eat the place, but there are some of us that will have, we, will not, we may not even get that, that, uh, that ability immediately, some of us will have to keep working with God, we will have to keep taking one step after another step, we will keep up to work with God step by step, we will be, uh, keep up to keep growing in Him, sometimes God may even train us, maybe He's calling us to the office of the apostle or the office of the teacher, but it will first of all make you a Sunday school teacher, or it will first of all put you in the choir to be growing. You grow in that grace, but that may not be your actual grace. That may not be what God is calling you. He's just training you. And you get to a particular point where you actually discover the grace that is calling you to. Let me give you a good example. When you look at the book of Luke chapter Luke chapter 10, you see where Jesus called all the apostles, uh, the 12 of them, and sent them out. And then this is what he did. Luke chapter 10. He said, and these things the Lord appointed and ordered 70 also. Okay. Okay, let me just continue. Because he had first of, uh, sent them. You know, let's look at Luke chapter 9. He appointed 70 after them. But let's look at uh, chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. He said, then he called his 12 disciples together and he gave them power and authority 
over all devils and to cure diseases. So God gave them power and ability. I've often said that if when God is raising you to an assignment to a ministry, at a, when you get to a training phase, it will give you power, it will give you authority. You are, it is not power for ministry yet. It is just power to train you in the ministry is still going to give you in the future. And when he gives you that ability, you discover that you can do stuff. Now, they were, they, were curing, they were curing diseases and they had authority over devils. They were healing the sick. The Bible said verse 2, and he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to what? And to heal the sick. That's what they were doing. But that was not necessarily all the anointing that God wanted them to do. That was not necessarily the grace that all of them had. Why do I say that? Look at Revelation chapter 1 verse 1. Look at how things changed for uh, 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 John. The Apostle John, when 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 he entered into his ministry proper, when he had finished his training with Jesus, and Jesus had gone to heaven, and he had released them to fulfill their ministry. Look at John became what a prophet. John became a prophet, even though he had an ability, he was healing the sick, uh, curing uh, uh, diseases before. But look at what happened to him now. Revelation chapter one said the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to his pass. Come, come to pass and he sent and signified it, signified it by his angel unto his servant John do you see that so John became a prophet and God began to send angels to him to speak to him about things that must shortly come to pass to begin to enter into prediction prediction was not part of the things that Jesus gave them in, 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 in Luke chapter 9 Prediction was not part of those things, it was not recorded there. But when the time came, he had grown to a particular point, you know, God now separated him into his own particular ministry and gave him an ability and anointing to move as a prophet. So sometimes it can happen that God is calling you, but you will have to work with God until you come to a place of uh, where you discover your own particular ministry oil. You God will now begin to shape you. Maybe God has told you before that I'm sending you to the nations, you'll be this, you'll be that. And but as you work with God, even if you did not understand what God was saying. Thing. You come to a point where you, you begin to see the anointing God begins to release your, into your life. Then you begin to discover that God is calling you to be an evangelist. That all the promises He has been given unto you, oh, so He was calling you to be an evangelist. So you may not have understood everything in the beginning, but as you work with God, as you work with God, just as I, just as I, as I portray to you, uh, showing you uh, the, the progression of the Apostle John, you begin to see how God brought him into his own particular calling so it might happen like that in your in your in your fellowship uh in your in your, in your university campus fellowship you know wherever you are it's possible that god gave you an anointing and maybe you're the president or you're the secretary your bible study uh, secretary and you were you were teaching the direction of the word came it does not mean that god is calling you to actually preach the word in the future that may actually be the calling of god upon your life and god may begin to work with you from that particular point it may begin to give you your mandate at that particular point and you understand that that is the the, 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 the mantle for your destiny the oil of your destiny but there are some people that that may not be the oil of their destiny that may just be a training phase and they may get to a particular point in their life where after they are fully trained like john the baptist uh, no, like opposed to john god will then give them the mantle that he has called them the oil that he's calling them with and like john he will call them to be prophets to be evangelists to be doctors to be wherever he, Abia is calling them to be and so, I, when I cry tonight, why am I saying all this? Is that what you need to first of all discover your oil. You need to first of all discover your ministry oil. I still see that angel of, of harvest. And he's still standing, looking at me. And I, I, I feel a message he's saying. He's saying again that I'm ready to raise men. He's saying, I'm ready to raise men. I'm ready to raise men for the harvest. I'm ready to raise men for the harvest. He's saying that men need to be prepared. Men need to be prepared. Men need to be prepared. They need to come to a place where God can use them. They need to carry power. They need to carry fire. They need to carry mantles. They need to carry mantles. They, I need to put mandates upon them. I need to put mandates upon them. He's saying, will you carry the mantle? 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 Empire Lia Palatandi Rekete Babalas Mireke Tapalas Maliapa Melebre Kete Bebele Ketiza Rekete Poche Kete Baba. Will you carry the mantle for your destiny? Ekasuko Reba. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for that word. Thank you, Jesus, for that word. Thank you, Jesus, for that word. In Jesus' name. Now, let me go forward. So you see that, that everybody has their own mantle and the first thing is that you need to work with God to a point where you can discover your own mantle. If you are lucky to have discovered your own, even from, from because God works with everybody in different ways, if you are lucky to have discovered your own, 
immediately you were born again or from birth. Someone like John the Baptist would have discovered his own from birth. Somebody like uh, 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 um, Samson would have discovered his own from birth. Some people immediately they give their life to Christ, the anointing of the Spirit to begin to work upon them, God will give them their accordance. But some people, they will have to work with God to a particular point until God encounters them and then begins to place the oil of their destiny upon them. And so you need to work with God. The first thing you need to do today is to work with God to a place where you have discovered your destiny oil. So body of Christ, the question that the Holy Spirit is asking you now is this, have you discovered your ministry oil? Have you discovered your destiny oil? Have you discovered what God is calling you to carry? Have you discovered the mantle, the glory that is calling you to carry? Have you discovered what makes you special? Have you discovered what makes you different? Have you discovered that thing that makes you super extraordinary? I don't know why I keep hearing that word super extraordinary. God is trying to say that you are meant to be turned into another man. You are meant to be different. God is wanting men to rise up. God is wanting prophets to rise up. God is wanting evangelists to rise up. God is wanting doctors to rise up. God is wanting engineers to rise up. God is wanting men and women who are going to rise up and carry a grace that will make them extraordinary, super extraordinary wherever he is sending them to. And that grace will now cause them to be have the power to draw souls to him, to cause men to bow down to him, to cause men to bow down, to cause, he said, Gentiles shall come to the light and kings to the brightness of the rising. Bible says Jesus manifested forth his glory and what happened? Bible said that what uh, Kalaba and his disciples believed in him. Look at it. Quickly look at something. Quickly look at something. I want to show you Luke chapter three. Something that happened when when the anointing came upon uh, 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 John the Baptist. John the Baptist was preaching, and when the power of God was so strong upon him, somebody who was living in the wilderness, the cloth he was wearing was just uh, 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 is it a goat, uh, is it a zero ram, I've forgotten uh, how, how the Bible described it. He was not wearing normal clothing because he was living in the wilderness. And when he came out, look at what happened in verse, um, in verse 10. He had preached and the way he preached, you would think that he had started a ministry before, but the power of God was so strong upon him. And as he preached, the Bible said that, and the people asked him saying, what shall we do? You see, people asked him, what shall we do? Look at verse uh, 12. He said, then came also publicans. You see that tax collectors and the others, they came to him to be baptized, asking him again, Master, what shall we do? You preach a message so powerful and people are convicted and they come to you and say, what shall we do? You operate as a businessman, you operate as a politician. You don't actually have to preach a, a, an actual message. But through the, 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 the meaning, the man that God gives you in, 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 in the office, he has called you as a politician, as, as a governor, as a teacher, uh, as a family man, as somebody, as whatever he has called you to. You fulfill your mandate and you see people come to you and say, Master, what shall we do? That is influence. That is authority. That is capacity. That is that is that is that is grace. That is glory. That is brightness. Ma shekete ba embra papa lekete opolo shekete. Look at verse fourteen again. After the publicans came again, the soldiers came again. Do you see that this is another third one again? Verse fourteen. And the soldiers likewise demanded of him and saying what again? What shall we do? Roman soldiers, not even soldiers of the Jews, soldiers from the Roman Empire too, they came from the palace to hear him preaching again and to say again, what shall we do? May you carry influence, may you carry capacity, may you carry power, may you carry grace, may you be different, may you carry supernatural capacity within you. So that the world will say, what shall we do? What shall we do? And you need to work with God to the, po to, the, to the point where you discover. You need to work with God to the point where you discover the capacity is calling you to carry. The capacity is calling, is wanting to mantle you with. The capacity he wants to put upon you. The capacity he wants to release upon you. Now, because of my time, let me quickly go to the second issue. Now that you've discovered, you've worked with God and you've discovered, some of us will discover early, some of us in your work with God, you will grow from one level to another and you finally get to a place where you discover your ministry assignment and you will be able to carry your ministry amount to, you will know your ministry oil. And then once you've discovered your ministry oil, the second thing is that you need to now own your ministry oil. You need to develop it, you need to begin to work upon that 
oil until you become capable of operating any army because this revival that god is bringing you need to carry you need to wield it in such a way that that you do not make mistakes you're able to draw souls you are going to draw nations you're able to cause men and women to bow to the name of jesus you cannot you cannot afford to be practicing on the field any soldier who is still learning how to shoot a gun on the field will be killed so you need to come to a place where you cannot, you will not make mistakes and make mockery of the ministry of God and make mockery of your assignments. You need to come to a place where you are able to bring men into the kingdom, invest men into the kingdom by the reason of the oil. And the place for practice is what? Before you get to the field. And so after you discover your ministry, the second thing you need to do is to develop your ministry. Let me quickly take you to 2 Timothy chapter 1. Ibarata lebro shekete baba. Second Timothy chapter one, in Baria Katala two soto, and the Libra second Baba. Second Timothy chapter one. Look at verse six. This is Paul talking to Timothy. He said, "Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gifts of God, which is in thee by the putting of, by the putting on of my hand." You see that? For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Stir up. What does it mean to stir up? And another scripture said, fan into flames. Fan your gifts to flames. So you have discovered a spark. You have known what it can do. You have you have you have you have known that ah you carry this particular oil. God is calling you to be a prophet to the nations. God is calling you to be an evangelist that called to heal the sick. Yes, but now have you been able to pray for the sick to be healed? Have you been able to pray for men to be delivered? Have you come to a place where when people are sick, they can come to you? God is calling you to be a prophet to the nations. When men come to you, can you see for them? Can you hear the voice of God for them? Can you can you operate in the prophetic for them? When God has called you to be a teacher, can do are you are you so skillful in the world that you can bring the counsel of God from the world for them? God has called you to be an engineer. Are, are you proficient enough in your field to bring results? God has called you uh, to be a doctor. Are you proficient in your field to, to, to bring results? You know, God has called you to be to, to the family mountain. Do how much has God built you? Have you developed your capacity? Have you have you have you have you developed yourself? Have you owned your skills? Have you owned your anointing? Have you owned your ministry oil? Do you know what God is calling you? Have you owned it enough to be able to fully manifest the capacity? God is saying that you need to develop, you know, while preparing, God was telling me that, 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 that we need to develop this, once you've discovered this oil, you need to develop it to come to a place where we are ready, where we are ready, where we are ready to, be, to, to, to have it ready for use. So we need to develop to a place where it is ready for you, so that when this revival, you know, begins in earnest and God begins to send us to different places, that when we get to those places, it will not be the time for practice. It will be the time for delivery. It will be the time when we will be drawing Gentiles to us. It will be taking the time that Gentiles will be coming to our light. And so this revival must not meet you. You must uh, uh, unprepared. You must not be left out. And so the question is this: How prepared are you? How have you developed the anointing of God upon your life? How have you owned the skill? How have you owned it? How have you developed it? Have you found into flames? How does God find these gifts into flames? How does God find it into flames? Look at, look at, look at, look at chapter 10. God finds this gift into flames by giving you ministry opportunities. When I say ministry, I'm not talking about just fivefold ministry. We have established that everybody has an office, and that means that everybody has a ministry. The Bible said, uh, uh, he gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Uh, 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 he said for the, uh, for the equipping of the saints so that the saints can do the work of the ministry. So every saint has a work of ministry. But now, uh, how, how does God facilitate this finding of gifts into flames? Because you, are, you cannot find this gifts into flames by yourself. You do not really know the fullness of the anointing, the amount of the oil that God has placed upon you. So God is going to be doing something. He's going to be giving you ministry opportunities. How did God develop these people develop themselves? Look, let's go back to Luke chapter 9 again. He said, then he called his 12 disciples together and he gave them power and authority over all devils. Do you see that? And to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Now, this time he was still on earth, so they had not begun ministry. He was only giving them an opportunity to be trained. And so he sent them out. And so God is going to be giving you ministry opportunities. So if he's going to be giving you opportunities to, 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 
to, to perform ministry, to begin to exercise in that anointing, that ministry oil, so that you begin to see the capacity, so that you come to a place where you see the length and the breadth and the height and the width, and you, you, you will know exactly what it's about, you will know areas you should develop yourself, you will know the capacity you should carry, you will know the possibilities that, that you that you endure within. God will give you ministry opportunities as He has given these ones opportunities. Look at it again. Abalaba o shekete ba ro shekete baba. Now, Abalaba baba baba. I want you to look at Luke chapter ten. Now, look at it again. And after this, thing, the Lord appointed other seventy also and sent them two and two before His face into every city and place where He Himself would come. You see that? Now, there is something that I want you to see. Look at verse um seventeen. And the seventy returned again with joy saying lord even the devils are subject unto us through thy name this is a report that ah no yes we 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 have learned this thing we have grown we have, we saw that we had we we, we, we practiced with this oil and we were able to to to, to perform uh, with it we are able to perform marvelously with it we have grown you see that do you see that now that's what i wanted to show you that god will provide opportunities and so when it comes to finding your gifts to flames the question is how have you been cooperating with jesus to come to a place where you can find your gifts to, to flames? because it will definitely give you ministry opportunities it will definitely provide opportunities for you and so you need to work with him to speak with him to, to hear from him to follow his footsteps step by step and it, as he will give you ministry opportunities and as he's giving you you need to develop and find those gifts to flame because it is gifts that are on fire that can actually perform miracles it is gifts and when i say miracles it's not everybody that will be healing the sick that is why god is calling us to different areas god is calling some people to be teachers god is calling some people to be apostles god is calling some people to be prophets god is calling some people to the family mountain god is, some people will perform miracles like joseph in in in, 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 in in, uh, uh, like Joseph in the political sphere. God, God will be giving people different capacities in different spheres and you will be bringing revival through whatever capacity that God has raised you. But the question now is this, have you developed yourself? Have you developed yourself? You see, Joseph, Bible, God gave him several opportunities. Even in the prison, he interpreted dreams. The dream that he interpreted later, that was already the, the, the gift that was of the human interpretation was already burning and in flames. So that by the time he got to Pharaoh, he was able to interpret the dream for Pharaoh and God set him up in as the prime minister that he was supposed to be. He was already somebody who knew how to take care of a home. He took care of the home of Potiphar. He became master in charge of the prison yard and he, 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 he took care of the prison yard. And so when 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 they made him prime minister, he could take care of what of the whole of Egypt. So God had already prepared him, had worked upon him, he had developed that capacity. So the question tonight, the question is that how how have you worked with God to the point of developing the capacity, developing the mantle, developing the oil that he wants to put upon your head? How have you worked with him to that point where you are, are able to walk, you are able to walk convincingly? The gift is already in flames. He said, find the gift to flames. He said, stir up the gift. Have you come to a place where you have stirred it up? It is now burning. You have stirred it up. It is burning and you are on fire. You can be sent anywhere. You can be used anywhere by God. You can be used so that this revival that is coming, you will not, you will not starve the revival. You will not be the reason why God is not having success in one area or the other. You will not be the reason why God is not having a success in America. Why God is not having a success in the Philippines. You, you will have owned your gift. You will have developed your gift so that you will, you, you will work with God and God will not have any setback in this revival. You need to understand that this revival is now ads. It's in the hands of this generation and we cannot afford to come to a place where this revival will fail. So the question that God is asking you tonight is, have you worked with him to a place of number one, discovery your ministry oil. Number two, have you worked with him into it to the point where you have uh, come to the place where you have developed even that ministry oil, where you have understood and you have developed it, you understand it, everything about it, and you are able to work with work in God to, to, to develop the ministry oil so that you can fulfill the mandate of God even upon your life. Those are the two questions God is asking us tonight. I want us to quickly pray. Holy Ghost, we come to you tonight. Lord, we need an encounter with your presence. We need an encounter with your spirit. Lord, we want to discover our ministry. Oil. We want to discover that mantle that you have given unto us. 
Oh, somebody is listening to me. Your name is John. Your name is John. You are listening to me. Your name is John. You are a brother. You are slim. You are light in complexion. You are, you are slim. You are light in complexion. You are not too tall. And the Lord is saying, I see a sickle in your hand, and God is asking me to tell you that He's calling you into the ministry of the evangelist. I see a sickle in your hand, you are called to the ministry of the evangelist. Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus, help us discover our ministry oil. Release your mantle, release your mantle tonight. 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 There's somebody listening to me. You are your name is Biodun. <laughs> Biodun. You are a lady. You are dark in complexion. Biodun okay. You are dark in complexion. You are a bit chubby. I don't know if your name, I think it's Brother Okeo. Okay. You are a bit chubby. Now you are listening to me. You are, your own oil is in music. You are called to worship. You are called to lead worship in the nations. Maria Sakapa Akayeketoso. Mbratele Ketebra Ashekete. O Shekete Ba Asatala Badabada. O Shekete Ba. Lord, we ask that Lord in the name of Jesus. And we ask that Lord be released to us. Give us a revelation. Lord, give us revelation. Help us discover our ministry oil. Help us discover our ministry oil in the name of Jesus. Kapalia, eke vike vipro o sheketa, o mbala pale palo sheketa, apa a shekete bra asamba, e ratala, e bra a shekete, o shekete bababa, le bra a shekete bababa, in the name of Jesus. Kapazo toria baba, Lord I ask in the name of Jesus tonight, that you touch your people. I see God raising a army of men, and is mantling them with, with mantles of power mantles of power lord so i pray tonight for as many as are under the sound of my voice that are waiting on you to receive a mantle lord i ask in the name of jesus release a mantle of power release a mantle of power in the name of jesus release a mantle of power in the name of jesus somebody is listening to me your name is george your name is george God is calling you to be a foreteller. God is calling you to be a foreteller. That the meaning of that is that He's calling you to be a prophet. But specifically, you are going to be a prophet who predicts, who foretells. That's why your gift, you are a brother, you are listening to me. Uh, I don't think you are, I'm not sure you are Nigerian. I'm not sure you are, you are African. I don't know, but I see you light in light complexion. Let me just say, I see you light in complexion. And I see you I see you with a crystal ball. I don't know why you are with a crystal ball. You are trying to you are trying to foretell. But God is saying that He is calling you to actually foretell. Maybe this is the reason why you are having that desire. But God is delivering you in the name of Jesus from that spirit of divination, and is launching you into your own calling as a prophet to be a foreteller in the kingdom delivering you from the spirit of divination now in the name of jesus thank you jesus lord so we pray for as many as are hearing the sound of my voice lord that are waiting upon you to discover their ministry oil release 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 revelation encounter them in the name of jesus help them discover their ministry oil now in the name of jesus lord we pray for that we pray for that for as many that are seeking for ministry platforms opportunities to be able to find their gifts their ministry oil to flame lord let doors begin to open let ministry doors begin to open let ministry opportunities begin to open my shot let ministry opportunities begin to open now in the name of jesus my shake shake it let ministry opportunities begin to open i see somebody you are an engineer i see you with your tools your name is joy you are a lady funny enough you are a lady and the lord is calling you to uh, a ministry where you can bring revival in uh the marketplace in your place of work as an engineer your name is joy i see you with tools 
engineering tools as i say screwdriver and different different things and god is calling you in the, to be an engineer but he's saying through through your calling through being an engineer he's saying he wants to use you in companies i don't know in companies in companies wherever he's going to be setting you he will be sending you to companies he will be appointing you to different companies in place and that is where he will be using you for his own glory to bring revival to bring revival i'm hearing another name margaret 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 Margaret, 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 it's a Ketebrasa Adalababa. You are presently uh currently second but an house help. You are presently an house help. I see that you are presently an house up. You are working in a big uh in a big uh family, a big outside. The building is big, everything is big, and you are working there. God is saying that you are going to be used of in, in the nations. Your life will not end as a slave. He's saying that I want to use you in the nations. You will take the gospel to the nations. I hear evangelists. I don't know whether it means the actual evangelist that does crusades because nowadays God, I've, I've had different kinds of evangelists. I've, I've heard of fashion evangelists. I've heard of different evangelists. But God is specifically calling you to be an evangelist to the nations. There is a message that God is calling you to carry to the nations for him. Now, I see somebody on the field, you are playing soccer, your name is Daniel. You are playing soccer, your name is Daniel. You are, you are of course, you are a guy, you are dark in complexion, and the Lord is calling you uh, to uh, the nations. <laughs> the Lord is calling you to the nations. You are going to be playing football for him, but football is not the goal. He's saying that he wants you to, he wants you to use your status, the influence he's about to give you as a footballer to draw men to jesus you are going to be very successful in the in the football uh, uh in your football ambition and he's going to make you successful a oil is given to you you will be successful and in your success he wants you to use it to draw souls to the kingdom i see somebody you are a chef in the kitchen you are a chef in the kitchen. You are a chef in the kitchen. Balababa, you are listening to me. You are a chef in the kitchen. You are a lady. You are a chef in the kitchen. I see you cooking. Um, you are cooking different kinds of things. I don't want to limit. Although what I'm seeing you doing presently now, I'm seeing you working with cabbage and different kind of vegetables. But I don't want to limit. I just I know you are a chef and you are a lady. Alababa, ashike de baba. God is asking me to tell you that you are different. You are separate. You are different. I don't know what you have been thinking in your mind, in your head, but God is asking to tell you you are different. You don't compare yourself with others. You are different. The mandate, the mantle, the, the, the anointing you carry upon your head is separate. It's not like others. You are separate. You are separate. He will use you for his own glory. He will send you to the places he wants to send you. Do not, do not, do not look down on the work you are doing right now. Do not look down on the work you are doing right now. Because when the time is right, he said, I will set you up. I will set you up. I will set you up and I will use you for my own glory. Do not let anything discourage you. You are separate. You are different. You carry a mantle of grace. You carry a mantle of honor. You are different. Thank you, mighty Father. Thank you, mighty Father. Thank you, mighty Father. Thank you, mighty Father. Ah, Kalababa. I see someone. I don't know if this is a spot or that you are an actual soldier because I see you fighting and you are carrying a shield. Uh, pala, 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 pala. maybe it's gymnastics or something maybe like a sport the lord is saying that do not do not um how did the bible put it that you should not you should not stop doing good you should not stop uh not it's not really doing good but you should look you should not be weary in well doing yes yeah, she's not be very well doing that's the word of the lord to you and she said that you continue 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 there is a glory about to be manifest that's what you are an acro yeah it's, it's something the area of acrobatics and the likes he's saying that do not be very really well doing he said he's about to lift you he's about to lift you he's calling you into that area he's about to use that thing to to, to to promote your name everywhere he's going to promote your name through that that spot i said that he say i'm hearing the lord he said that i'm going to do miraculous things in the life of my children if they will just surrender themselves to me he wants to release mantles he wants to release mantles he says i want to release mantles i'm about to do great things in the life of my children if they will only allow me to use them for my own glory thank you mighty jesus thank you mighty jesus thank you for moving tonight 
Thank you for moving tonight. Thank you for moving tonight. Lord, we bless you. We pray for as many as have received their mantles or their, their and, and destiny directions. Lord, we ask that they are, they, are, they are established in these directions in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray as many as have not heard from you, Lord. We ask that, Lord, you speak to them in the name of Jesus. Help them discover their ministry oil. And, Lord, provide opportunities for everyone listening to me so that they will be, they will be able to find their gifts to flame. They will be able to stir up their gift on this burning, burning bright. So that on the day you need them in this revival that is coming, they will not be found wanting in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Jesus. Thank you, mighty Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now I want to bless God once again for another opportunity in His presence. I know that we, are, we would have been blessed today because I, I, I see that God has really spoken to many of us. God has really touched many people speaking to us. In bad like Alabama. And God has told many people listening to me today. I know our lives will not be remain the same in the name of Jesus. May we become vessels, vessels, vessels of power and grace. And we will not be found wanting even when this revival even finally comes in the name of Jesus. Um if uh uh, you have not subscribed, please. I don't know what uh, you've been waiting for. Please subscribe so that you can to receive more content like this, even from us in the name of Jesus. And then, uh, if you don't like this video, I please I adjure that you 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 like this video so that this video can even go to as many as I've, uh, as would, as God would want it to get to. Please click the notification bell so that you receive our videos. You'll be notified when our videos drop. And then, please, if you not share, please share. To as many uh, people as possible so that they too will also receive this message. God bless us in the name of Jesus. To be seen in another video, God bless us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sleep in 